Welcome back everyone to the live CUBE coverage here in Boston, Massachusetts for AWS Reinforce 22. With a great guest here, Denise Heyman, CRO, Chief Revenue of Sunray Security. Sunray's a featured partner of season two, episode four of the upcoming AWS Startup Showcase coming in late August, early September. Security themed, startup focused event. Check it out, awsstartups.com is the site. We're on season two, a lot of great startups. Go check them out, Sunray's in there now for the second time. Denise, great to see you, thanks for coming on. Ah, thanks for having me. So, you've been around the industry for a while, you've seen the waves of innovation. We heard encrypt everything today on the keynote. We heard a lot of cloud native. They didn't say shift left, but they said, don't bolt on security after the fact, be in the CI CD pipeline or the dev stream. All that's kind of like top of line. Amazon's talking cloud native all the time. This is kind of what you guys are in the middle of. I've covered your company, you've been on theCUBE before, you're, not you, but your, your teammates have. You guys have a unique value proposition. Take a minute to explain for the folks that don't know, we'll dig into it, but what you guys are doing, why you're winning, what's the value proposition? Yeah, absolutely. So, so Sonry is, I mean, what we do is it's, we're a total cloud solution, right? Obviously, right, this is what everybody says. Um, but what we're dealing with is really, our superpower has to do with the data and identity pieces within that, that framework. Um, and we're, we're tying together all the relationships across the cloud, right? And this is a, a unique thing because customers are really take, talking to us about being able to protect their sensitive data, protect their identities, and not just people identities, but the non-people identity piece is the hardest thing for them to rein in. Yeah. So that, that's really what we specialize in. And you guys are doing good, and some good reports on good sales, and good meetings happening here. Um, here at the show, the big theme to me, and, and again, listening to the keynotes, you hear, you can see what wasn't talked about. Mm -hmm. Ransomware wasn't talked about much. They talked about air gap. They mentioned more, ransomware, I think, once. You know, normal stuff, teamwork, encryption everywhere. But identity was sprinkled in everywhere. And I mm -hmm. think one of the, my favorite quotes was, was um, I wrote it down, uh, weave security in the development cycle, CSD, they didn't say shift left, don't bolt it on other. Now that's not new information. We know that don't bolt right. it on, it's been around for a while. He said, lessons learned, this is Steven Schmidt, who's the CSO, top dog on security, <laughs> who has access to what and why, over permissive environments creates chaos. Absolutely. This is what you guys rein in. It is. Explain, explain that. Yeah, I mean, we just did a survey actually with AWS and Forrester around what are all the issues in this area that, that customers are concerned about and, and clouds in particular. Um, one of the things that came out of it is like 95% of uh, clouds are over, what's called overprivileged, which means that there's access running amok, <laughs> right? I mean, it, it, is, it is a crazy thing, and if you think about the, the whole value proposition of security, it's to protect sensitive data, right? So if, if it's permissive out there, and then sensitive data isn't being protected, I mean, that, that's where we really rein it in. You know, it's interesting, I zoom out, I just put my historian hat on, going back to the early days of my career, in late 80s, early 90s, there's always, when you have these inflection points, there's always these problems that are actually opportunities. And DevOps, infrastructure as code, was all about APS, all about the developer. Now, and now open source is booming. Open source is the software industry. Open source has eaten the world. Right. That's <laughs> now the software industry. Cloud scale has hit, and now you have the devs completely in charge. Mm. Now, what suffers now mm. is the ops and the sec, sec and ops. Now, ops, DevOps, now DevSecOps, is where all the action is. Yep. So the, 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 the next thing to do is build an abstraction layer. That's what everyone's trying to do, build tools and platforms. And so that's where the action is here. This is kind of where the innovation's happening because the networks aren't, the, aren't in charge anymore either. So you now have this new migration up to higher level services and opportunities to take the complexity away. Mm -hmm. Because what's happened is customers are getting complexity. That's right. They're getting it shoved in their face because they want to do good with DevOps, scale up, but by default their success is also their challenge. Right. Because of complexity. That's exactly so right. Is, you agree with that. I okay. do totally agree with that. If you believe that. that, then what's next? What happens next? You know, what I hear from customers has to do with two specific areas, is they're really trying to understand control frameworks, right, and be able to take these scenarios and build them into something that they, where they can understand where the gaps are, right? And then, on top of that, building in automation. So the automation is a, is a theme that we're hearing from everybody. Like, how, how do they take and do things like, you know, it's 
it's what we've been hearing for years, right? How do we automatically remediate? How do we automatically prioritize? How do we, how do we build that in so that they're not having to hire people alongside that, but can use software for that? The automation has become key, you got to find it first. Yes. You guys are also part of the dev cycle too. Explain yeah. that piece. So I'm a developer, I'm an organization. You guys are on the front end, you're not bolt on, right? We can do either. Uh, we prefer it when customers are willing to use us right at the very front end, right? Because anything that's built in the beginning doesn't have the extra cycles that you have to go through after the fact, right? So if you can build security right in from the beginning and, and have the ownership where it needs to be, then you're not having to to deal with it afterwards. Okay, so how do you guys put my customer hat on for a second? A little hard, hard question, hard problem. I got Active Directory on Azure, I got IAM over here with AWS. I want everything to look the same. Now my on-premises ah. is going to booming, because now I got cloud operations. Right. So DevOps has moved to my premise and edge. So what do I do? Do I throw everything out, do a redo? Uh, how, do you a guys, how do you guys talk about talk to customers that have that challenge? Because a lot of them are old school. Right. I, I, uh, ID. Uh, and, I, and I think there's a, I mean, there's an important distinction here, which is there's the Active Directory identities, right, that customers are used to, but then there's this whole other area of non-people identities, which is compute power and privileges and everything that gets going when you get, you know, machines working together. And we're finding that it's about five to one in terms of how many identities are non-human identities versus human identities. Wow. So, so you actually have to look so at- So programmable access. Basically. Yeah, yes, absolutely, right. Wow. Um, and privileges and roles that are you know, accessed via different ways, right, because that's how it's assigned, right, and people aren't really paying that close attention to it. So from that scenario, like the, the AD thing, of, of course that's important, right, to be able to, to, to take that and lift it into your cloud, but it's actually even bigger to look at the bigger picture with the non-human identities. What about right? the um, CISOs out there that you talk to? You're in the front lines, talking yep. to customers, and you see what's coming on the roadmap. Yep. So you kind of get, the best of both worlds, see what they, what's coming out of engineering. What's the biggest problem CISOs are facing now? Is it the sprawl of the problems, um, the, the hacker space? Is it not enough talent? Um, what are, I mean, obviously the fear. What are, what are they facing? How do, you, how do you see that and then what's your conversations like? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, um, the answer to that is unfortunately yes, right? They're dealing with all of those things and, and here we are at the intersection of you know, the, this, this huge complex thing around cloud that's happening, there's already a gap in terms of resources, never mind skills that are different skills than they used to have, so I hear that a lot. Um, the, the bigger thing I think I hear is they're trying to take the most advantage out of their current team, so they're, again, worried about how to operationalize things. So if we bring this on, is it going to mean more headcount? Is it going to be you know, things that we have to invest in differently? And I was actually just with a CISO this morning and the whole team was, was, uh, was talking about the fact that bringing us on means they, have, they can do it with less resource. Mm -hmm. Like th this is a, a, a resource uh, help for them in this particular area. So that, that yeah. was their value proposition for us, which I loved. I was talking with Adrian Cockcroft, who retired from AWS. He was at Netflix before, he was a big DevOps guy. He talks about how agility's been great because from a sales perspective, the old model was, he called it the, the big Indian wedding. You have to get everyone together, yeah. do a POC, you know, long sales cycles for big tech investment, proprietary. Now open source is like it's speed dating. You can know what's good quickly um, and, and try things quicker. How is that, how is that impacting your sales motions, your customer engagements? Are they fast? Are they, are they test try before they buy? What's the engagement model you, you, you see happening that, that customers like the best? Yeah, hey, you know, um, because of the fact that we're kind of dealing with the serious part of the problem, right, with the identities and, and, uh, and, and dealing with data aspects of it, um, it's not as fast as I would like it yeah. to be, right? It's because pretty important, they, they still need to get in and understand it. And then it's different if you're AWS environment versus other environments, right? We have to normalize all of that mm -hmm. and bring it together. And it's such a new space yeah. that they all want to see it first, yeah. right? So, and, not, a, and the consequences are pretty big. They're huge, yeah. right? So, the, I mean, the scenario here is we're still doing, um, in some cases, we'll do workshops instead of a POV or a POC. 90% of the time though, we're still doing a POV. Yeah, you got right, to. So they can see what it is. They got to get their hands on it. This yep. is one of those things they got to see in action. Um, what is the um, best of breed, if you had to say best of breed and identity looks like blank, how would you describe that from a customer's perspective? What do they need the most? 
Is it robustness? What's some of the things that you guys see as differentiators for having a best of breed solution like you guys a have? Best of breed solution. Um, I mean, for, for or us. A or a relevant solution, for that matter. For this yeah, piece. I mean, for us, this again, this identity issue, it, it, for us it's depth and it's continuous monitoring, right? Because the issue in the cloud is that there are new privileges that yeah. come out every single day like to the tune of like 35,000 a year. So mm -hmm. even if at this exact moment it's fine, it's not going to be in yeah. another moment, right? So having that continuous monitoring in there and, and it solves this issue that we hear from a lot of customers also around lateral movement, right? Because I, like a piece of compute can be on and off yeah, yeah. within a few seconds. Right, so you can't use any of the old traditional things anymore. So it, to me, it's the continuous monitoring. I, I, I think, think that's I, important. I think that and the lateral movement piece yep. that you guys have is what I hear the most of the biggest fears. Mm -hmm. Someone gets in here and can move around. That's right. And that's dangerous. Mm -hmm. and, and no traditional tools will see it. Yeah. Right, yeah. there's nothing in there unless you're instrumented down to that level, which is yeah. what we do. It, you're not going to see it. I mean, you, when someone has a firewall or perimeter-based system, yeah, I'm in the castle, I'm moving around, but that's not the case here. This is built for full observability, that's yet right. there's so it's many vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and our view too is, I mean, you bring up vulnerabilities, right? It, it is uh, you know, a little bit of the darling, right? People start yeah. there, and, and our belief and our view is that, okay, that's nice, but, and you do have to do that, you have to be able to see everything, right, to be yeah. able to operationalize it. But if you're not dealing with the sensitive data pieces, right, and the identities and stuff that's at the core of what you're trying to do, then you're not going to solve the problem. Yeah, Denise, I want to ask you, because you make, what was this, five to one was the machine to mm -hmm. humans? I think that's actually might be low on the low end. If you can imagine, if you believe that's yep. true, I believe that's true, by the way, if microservices continues to be the, be the wave. Oh, it'll just get which bigger. Which it will, it's going to be much bigger. Yeah. Turning on and off, so the lateral movement opportunities are going to be greater. Yep. That's going to be a bigger factor. Okay, so how do I protect myself? Now, because developer productivity is also important. Because mm -hmm. I've heard story, horror stories like, yep. yeah, my devs are cranking away. Uh-oh, something's out there, we don't know about it. Everyone has to stop, have a meeting. They get pulled off their task. It's kind of not agile. Right, right. I mean, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and um, in that vein, right, we have built the product around an, uh, what we call swim lanes. So the whole idea is we're prioritizing based on actual impact and context. So if it's a sandbox, it probably doesn't matter as much as if it's like operational code that's out there where customers are accessing it, right, or it's accessing sensitive data. Um, so we look at it from a swim lane perspective and we try to get whoever needs to solve it back to the person that is responsible for it, so we can, we can set it up that way. Yeah, I think that, the, that that's key insight into operationalizing yep. this, and remediation is key. Yes. How, how, much, how important is the timing of that? When you talk to your customer, I mean, time is obviously going to be longer, but like, seeing it's one thing, knowing what to do is another. Yep. Do you guys provide that? Is that some of the insights you guys provide? We do, it's almost like you know us. Um, the, uh, and, and again, there's context that's involved yeah. there, right? So some remediation from a priority perspective doesn't have to be immediate, and some of it is hair on fire, right? So we provide actually yeah. a recommendation per each of those situations, and, and in some cases we can auto-remediate, right? Yeah. If it, it depends on what the customer's comfortable with, right? But um, when I talk to customers about what is their favorite part of what we do, it is the auto-remediation. You know, one of the things on the keynotes, not to, not to go off tangent one second here, but Kurt, who runs platforms at AWS, mm -hmm. went on his little baby project, he, what he loves, was this automated, automatic reasoning feature. Mm which is essentially advanced machine learning right. that can connect the dots. Yep. Not just predict stuff, but like actually say, this doesn't belong here. Right. That's advanced computer science. That's heavy duty coolness. Mm -hmm. So operationalizing that way, the way you're seeing it, I, I'm imagining there's some future stuff coming around the corner. Can you share how you guys work with AWS specifically? Is it with Amazon? You guys have your own secret sauce? For the folks watching, because this remediation should, it only gets harder. You, got, you have to be smarter on yep. your end, uh, if you're engineers. What's coming next? Oh gosh, I don't know how much of what's coming next I can share with you, except for tighter and tighter integrations with AWS, right? Well, um, I've been in three meetings already today where we're talking about different AWS services and how we can be t more tightly integrated and what's things we want out of their APIs to be able to further enhance what we can offer to our customers. So there's a lot of those discussions happening right now. What, what are some of those conversations like? 
uh, that, that, um, well, that revealing I mean, they have to do with um, with privilege information. information. I, I don't mean like yeah. privileged information, I mean like privileges, like, right, that are out there. Like what you can access, what you can't. What you can, yes, and who and what can access it and what can't, and passing that information on to us, right, to be able to further remediate it for an AWS customer, that's, that's one. Um, you know, things like other AWS services like CloudTrail and you know, some of the other scenarios that they're talking about, like we're, you know, we're, we're getting deeper and deeper and deeper with the AWS yeah. services. It's almost as if Amazon over the past two years in particular has been really tightly integrating as a strategy to enable their partners like you guys mm -hmm. to be successful, not trying to land grab. Is that true, do you get that vibe? I definitely get that vibe, right? Uh, yesterday we spent all day in a partnership meeting where they were you know, talking about rolling out new services. I mean, they, they are in it to win it with their ecosystem, not, on, not just themselves. All right, Denise, great to have you on theCUBE here as part of Reinforce. I'll give you the last minute or so to give a plug for the company. You guys hiring, what are you guys looking for? C potential customers that are watching, why should they buy you, why are you winning? Give a, Give a uh, give the pitch. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so so yes, we are hiring. We're always hiring. <laughs> I think right in, in this startup world, um, we're growing and we're looking for talent probably in every area right now. I know I'm looking for talent on the sales side, uh, and and again the uh, I think the important thing about us is the the fullness of our solution, but the superpower that we have, like I said before, around the identity and the data pieces, and and this is becoming more and more the reality for customers that they're understanding that that is the most important thing to do. And I mean, if, if they're that, Gartner says it, Forrester says it, like we are one of the, one of the best choices for that. Yeah, you guys have been doing good. We've been following you. Um, thanks for coming on and congratulations you. on your success. And uh, we'll see you at the AWS Startup Showcase in late August. Check out Sunray Systems at the uh, AWS Startup Showcase late August. Here at theCUBE live in Boston, getting all the coverage from the keynotes to the experts to the ecosystem here on theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching.